Welcome to So Sensible. I'm here with my friend, Sam Bear, And we're gonna teach you how to make this shirt. We found the tutorial online and we're gonna make this, take this regular V-neck shirt and this tie and we're going to make it fabulous. So if you want to make this shirt, what you're gonna need is the shirt and the tie, and you're also gonna need the sewing machine. You could probably do this by hand. It will just take you a lot longer. The first thing I'm going to do is take this magazine and I'm gonna slide it in here. And the reason why I do this, I used to do screen printing with my mom back in the day um, to make Grateful Dead shirts. And what we used to do is we'd put this here and it kind of gave a surface uh, to work on. We didn't use a magazine, obviously. But the reason why we have this here is because we're gonna be pinning and we don't wanna pin through both of the layers of the t-shirt. So, now the tutorial said to start this way, to start this way with the short end and work its way around and then do the ruffling. But just looking at it, I was thinking, you know what? It's not gonna fit. So the first thing you do is, I'm gonna have to actually sit down for this. The first thing you do is you decide where you want it to end. So this is where I want it to be. So I'm gonna pin it right here. And then you're going to take the next one and you're gonna tuck it under here. See how I did that? I just tucked it. Did you see how I did that? I Sam? did see that. And I just, so as you see with her shirt, it kind of, the ruffles gradually get smaller. And that's what the effect is that we're gonna go for is we're gonna have big ruffles that go to little ruffles. my magnetic pin holder. I love this thing. If you don't have a magnetic pin holder, you need to get one. Because if, when it's time to pick up, you just swipe it across and it's done. Now this is gonna work best with a V-neck shirt, but you could really do it with any, you could try to do it with a scoop. I, I don't know how that would come out. We were discussing that yesterday, if we should try doing it with a scoop. But now that I've made one, I feel like it's so simple that it can be done with anything. Now you see that my loops are getting gradually smaller in width, and this is the hardest part is doing this part. After this, it's a breeze. And I'm only pinning, I'm not pinning it perfectly because I'm gonna fix that as I'm going on the sewing machine. And where you're gonna stop with the ruffles is the seam edge on your shirt. Seems like we're running out of width for the ruffles. Okay. So now here we are. I cut it off early because we were running out of room for the ruffles, but you're just gonna pin it like this. Now you can pin it this way, but what happens is your fabrics are gonna shift. So you wanna always pin it like this. And this is the easy stuff right here. You wanna try pinning it? Sure. And what's great is you can just go to a thrift shop and you can get these ties pretty cheap. I myself go to the thrift shop by the post office. At, it's a church thrift shop. And 
I go to the church thrift shop by the post office in Swanton, and they have cheap, cheap ties there, and they always have a bag sale at the end of each season where I take all their ties because there's so many wonderful things that can be done with ties. I just keep going around? Yep, just keep going around. And at this point, you don't need to make sure that the seams are perfect because you can adjust all that on the sewing machine. You're just making sure that you can get it all the way around and what the length is because we're going to actually remove part of the tie so that there's a lot of extra hanging out. Okay, so as you see, we have the crossover. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip this up and we're going to see how much extra space is on there because we're going to cut it right here. Now this may see, seem complicated, but it, it might seem very soon seem complicated. So what I did is I just cut that, but I made sure there's plenty of room so that you don't want it to hang out. And then inside of every tie, there's this, I don't know what it's called that makes it lay correctly. And you just cut that extra part off. And then what you want to do is you want to fold it in. This is also a tricky part. So you fold it all down, just enough to hide it. So like a quarter of an inch. And then you would pin it shut. Okay, so now we're going to leave this folded up and we are going to stitch. We're going to stitch right along here and then we're going to stitch all the way around the whole thing. And then we're almost done. It's really quick and easy. But because we have to close this seam, we're going to drive this way, close the seam, and then we're going to back stitch back and go that way. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to fit the machine that way. So we're going to start with that. At this point, you can remove the magazine and bring it over to the machine. So I'm going to start the stitch. Okay. Just because it gets complicated here. And then I'm gonna have you try it next. And you're gonna wanna take this part off. Are you stitching just the tie or the tie and the shirt right you're now? You're stitching the tie and the shirt the whole time. Okay. So what I could have done, if you can see it, I could have finished this tie end, but instead of wasting my time finishing that and then going back, I'm gonna just do it all in one step so that it's just done. Press your foot down. And that, can you hand me that pin please? pin magnet. So if you see, I'm just gonna slowly push it through. I don't wanna miss a stitch. And when you're working with heavier fabric, you wanna make sure that you don't go fast because you're going through like four or five layers and you don't wanna play games with, am I gonna break a needle or not, right? It's not a fun game. Okay, so then once I've done that, I've backed up most of the way, and you can just drive the rest of the way. You wanna get quarter edge, like you always do on a sewing machine, is the edge of your presser foot. That's what you aim for, as a quarter inch, at least that's what I like. And you just start driving. Now remember, it's also really helpful to take your shoes off so that you can feel how hard you're pushing on the presser foot. Um, you know when I'm sewing when I'm walking around the house with one shoe on. <laughs> oh, you sped it up a little. Yep. Don't do that. <laughs> so you just kind of drive it along. Now you get to take over. Oh boy.
So I have done this. Once you have or twice. done this, so I don't have to really worry. So the only thing that you want to make sure is if you look underneath, it's not perfectly on the edge. Mm -hmm. You don't want to pull it. This is like almost perfect because, okay. like right here, because you don't want to have it so close to the edge that the pink's going to hang out. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. don't want to have the unfinished edge or finished edge rather that doesn't look right. And just make sure that it, this tie part is hanging out. Okay. You want it to match up with that because you want to make sure that you're stitching enough to hold on because the last thing you want to do is miss the t-shirt and have to go back and do it all over again. How do I get it back over there? So just keep easing it. It's just like driving a car. You just drive it over there. That's how I drive at least. Oh, is it stuck under the mm -hmm. thing? Unless you want to keep going. No, you can do the ruffle. <laughs> so this is the only tricky part because you're going to be pulling the pin out and you're going to actually be holding it where the pin left you and you're going to straighten it out at this point too. Like see there's a point hanging out. Mm -hmm. You want to just push that in. Make sure that pink's covered a little bit. But then again, there's only so much you can do about the point, so. And this is where you go slow because you don't want to. Break it. Yeah, you don't want to force it when it's trying to put so many different layers. I don't remember what needle I put in, but I think it's an upholstery needle because I've been working with upholstery lately. So that might be why it's not giving us a hard time. And you're just gonna sew all the way to the corner of the tie. And I'm back stitching just for fun. Oops. And you cut off all the loose threads. I'm guilty of always leaving those on. You know when you get one of my quilts when there's five extra threads And then you have most of it. The only thing we need now is a button right here. And that is something that you can hand stitch. It's perfect. Got another one, huh? And I can actually sew that button on real quick. For fun. Where is the button? There it is. Okay. I'm just gonna steal some thread from my sewing machine. Now when I do buttons, usually I like to use upholstery thread because it's heavy duty, like for a jacket or something like that. But in this situation, we want it to match. So we're not gonna use my navy blue upholstery thread. Do you know how to see hand sew, too? Not really. Not really. So when you sew the button, you're going to start under here. And what I did is I put a knot at the end of this and I just knotted the two threads together. That means I've threaded this and then I put a knot. I, taught, I went and I looped it around to knot it. And what that does is it makes it easier because then when you get your 
needle around the thing. You go like this on the piece of fabric and it just kind of knots it in for you. So it it's, makes it so much easier. You decide where your button placement is. I, when I did her shirt, I did the V, I found the V and I put it there. That way it looked in the center. And then what you do is you just go under here and you tack it into place. And it's okay if you're not on, see how the, there's a string there? Mm -hmm. I'm not on a perfect, but it won't matter because once you start putting the, start tacking down the button, it won't matter anymore. Okay. And this only takes a few minutes. And then to tie it, I don't know if you can see that, you would go under another thread or just grab a little piece of fabric and make a loop. And then before you pull the loop down, you go through it twice. And that's a double knot. So it's super easy. And then, voila, voila you have a way to use your tie and a shirt that just didn't have enough pizzazz and it makes it really look professional. Perfect. There you go. Thanks, Heather. <laughs> so we'll move on to making a canvas bag. I also wanted to note that with your tie scrap, mm -hmm. you can make a little tie for your stuffed animal or a sensi buddy, so sensible. And I made this from one of my friends, Ace. His birthday's coming up, and I thought he'd really appreciate a little tie for his Scentsy Buddy. That's adorable. And that, what you do is that's pretty simple, too. You just do the thing where you finish the edge, and this one's really longer, so I could have actually made a knot and everything. Um, so that one I'll have to make a real tie with. And then you just attach it to elastic and put some Velcro on it, and you've got another project that you can do with it. Very cute. Leave him out. He can be your buddy. Okay. To make a canvas bag, it's so simple, you're not even going to believe it. You're going to be like, what? No way. <laughs> so the first thing you do, and of course there's some staining because this is from the 70s or 60s. This is very yeah. vintage fabric, very vintage. First thing you do is you take it and you decide how big you want your bag. Not a lot of excitement there. So you gotta think your bag is gonna be this wide and your edges have to compensate for the extra. So if you want a bag that's this wide, you need to cut it this wide, okay? So we're gonna cut it this wide. And then here's the bag part. And then what I'm also going to do is cut the handles, which I'm gonna go about this big. So that would be about three inches wide for the handles. And like I said, this is older fabric, so it actually, the width is not as wide because that's how they made them back then. And so if you're going to do it with regular upholstery fabric, because I have, you would get your handles cut from the top of your bag because there would be that much extra. So you could just, and that's how I made a lot of them is I just cut the top off. So the first thing that I like to do is make the handles. I know it sounds weird, but to make the handles, you take this, and you fold it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you fold it like this and like that, okay? That's a handle. Think you can handle that? I think so. Yeah. 
And then I just love the way that looks when it's a finished product. So you fold it like this, fold it like that, and then fold it like this. Double it over. Okay. It's not so easy when I do it. <laughs> do I just make it look easy? You're doing it. Yep. And just pin it in place. Remember, I've made like 30 of these. In fact, I don't even, I don't think I even pin it before I put it in the machine. I think I just do it at the machine. Just go for it. Yep. There's really not a lot of measuring with canvas bags, and I think that's why I really like to make them. It's all about look. And it's canvas bag. You're toting your groceries in it. It's not like, oh my gosh, what's that seam? Oh, can't bear it. Seems crooked. You know that's what the cashier wants to say to you. Yeah. Who made this bag? Oh my gosh. Okay. So, that looks great. They're about even. That's what you, your goal is. Of course, again, it's a canvas bag. It doesn't matter. So if you want to come over here, I'll start one just so that it's locked in the machine. And a reminder, I always like to put the needle in so that it stays where it is. Another cool thing about canvas bags, it doesn't matter what color thread you use. Right? Right. So, you just want to go and you want to make sure that you don't go over the seam. So can you, you can see that seam like right here. Mm -hmm. You just want to go really close to it because one of the things that I've noticed is that if you, sorry, I go faster because I've been sewing for too long. That's okay. Um, the, if you go too far in on the seam, then what's going to happen is you're going to miss it, which has happened to me and I've had to seam rip the entire handle and it drives me nutty. Your turn. That's not it. And with this one, it's good to hold it nice and tight. I'll just. And another thing is, is if you feel uncomfortable with the straight stitch and you feel like you're going to miss the seam, you can just use a zigzag stitch and that will get the job done too. Because then it's very difficult to miss it. And then it'll hit both. I don't think you can actually. Great, so now lift the presser foot up. Yes. That's yes. the needle, you can lift that up too. What do I do? Presser foot is right here. And then lift the needle up. And then you want to cut it right here. There's a little blade. See? Like that. Oh. And then, ta-da. Moving on. We'll do it this way, so. Is, would that be easier if this? Yeah, seemed... to take the needle up. See, I should have let you do that, sorry. Put the needle down. And one of the things that you want to do is when you first start, <laughs> hold the strings right here. Okay. While you get it in there. So while you start driving and kind of pull the strings right because sometimes the threads can get sucked right in and then it's a nightmare to get it undone after that. There you go. Now you have something to hold on to. And this one I think was folded over really well, so you don't have to worry as being so close to the oh, okay. thing. You can go towards the middle a little bit too. This must have been the one I folded. Yep, you did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another way you could do it is to sew it inside out and sew along the seam and flip it inside out like we used to do scrunchies. Do you remember that? Yes. And, uh, but that I feel is really time consuming. So I just do it this way because then it's done and it's over with and 
Who cares if you see the seam in the stitch? I think it actually adds a little depth to it. You're doing really good. Thank you. These would make a great gift bag. Instead Give these away paper. as gifts instead of wrapping paper and they could reuse it for their groceries. Do you remember what to do? Press your foot, needle, and then cut it. Perfect. Awesome. So then we're gonna go back over here. And I'm gonna cut these loose threads off before I forget. So this is really simple too. The only thing is I probably should have ironed this, but obviously we don't have an iron at the studio. So I'm just going to pin it like this. And what you're going to do, and actually it helps, is you're gonna start here. So we see that the, um, the good sides are facing together and that's what you want. And then you're gonna sew from the top. You're gonna make sure these are lined up and then you're gonna sew all the way to the bottom corner. And what this does is it ensures um, that it's gonna match up all the way. If you were to start here and it was shifted, you'd have like a longer end oh. on one side. Uh, then you wanna do the same thing on the other side too. You wanna to start at the top, okay? okay. What's great about this is it doesn't matter if you're straight. It just matters that, you know, you know what I mean? Like usually you do a quarter inch, but this is a canvas bag. And normally what I do is I also do a zigzag stitch. And a really loose one, I kind of drag it through just so that there's something to hold the fabric together. And I start like three or four inches down because you're not even, those are, aren't gonna be exposed and you'll see later. So I'm going to have you do the straight stitch. Always when that happens, you just wiggle it and it will come free. Never yank, always wiggle. Okay, so this is the trickiest part. After this, it gets easy, I promise. And it took me a while to even understand how to do it. But in order to square, the bottoms, because like right now we have a sack and that's great. You can put stuff in there. It's like, like one of those bags that you can put on your back or whatever that, but the thing is you don't want it to just like lay down. You want it to stand up. Mm -hmm. So you want it to have a square bottom. In order to do that, you take it and you see the seam right here mm -hmm. and you just open up the seam and see how that's basically straight, mm -hmm. that there's enough on both sides. And you can hold it up like this if that helps. Um, then you wanna pin it. And honestly, it really helps is to put it on your cutting board thing and you wanna just measure like two inches so that you remember. 
Uh, I suggest that when you're starting, what you should do is you should actually draw a line. There's the button. Oh well. I don't have a pen. So we're going to wing it. Um, you can just push your nail on there and make a line. It's a horrible line. And then you just want to sew it right here, two inches up. Okay. So you can see the stitch, see it's a little crooked. You can see the stitch right there. I don't know if you can see that. Then once that is in place and you're sure that you did it right, then you cut this extra thing off and then you have, I guess a little hat. You can make a little hat for the guy right here. I don't know what you do with that. It's an odd shape. And then what I, I definitely want to finish this edge. Okay. Because you want to make sure that it doesn't come undone because that's what's holding your food in. Okay, do you think you remember what I just told you? You wanna try doing it yourself? And try. You seem to be very good at this. I think you're better than you've led on to believe. Here, I'm doing your work for you. I should just make you do it. It helps if you stick your hand in the case. And then just press it down on the... Like that? Yep. That looks good, yeah. So and then... In that right here? Yep. You can make a little mark with your fingernail so that you can kind of follow it. Seems like it's taking it pretty well. And then you're gonna sew a straight stitch on that. Great, now back stitch. Did I teach you how to do that yet? No. Hold this down and then press the button on your, button. Foot, your foot pedal. Oh. So hold this down and press foot oh, pedal. Oh, at the same time? Yep. I know, it's really difficult, like chewing gum and walking. Okay, that's good. Just a couple, just to make sure that it's there. It took me a while to get the hang of that back pedaling, actually. You're doing better than I did. <laughs> okay. Show me how you do it. <laughs> and I just cut it off? Yep. Are you sure you're not sewing at home? <laughs> I've sewn before. Not recently. And then we're going to switch to zigzag. And then press down. And then seven. Yep. Do I do a back stitch on a zigzag too? You don't have to. Now we have a bag that sits flat, 
right? Now the last thing we have to do is we have to finish the top and we have to put these handles on there too. So in order to do, to do that, I don't know if, it's kind of like making pants, the waist pant. Have you ever made pants before? No. Pajama pants? No. Boxers? No. Those are actually my favorite to make. And look, it's 100% cotton, cotton and it's 15, it was 15 yards once upon a time. I thought the bag was your favorite to make. It's, it's, uh, it's a toss up. <laughs> so you fold it over once. See how it's folded over once? People out there, party people. And then you're gonna fold it over twice. So it's like essentially like rolling a paper bag as one would do. You know, when you have hiccups and whatnot. So once that's rolled over, and I know you could do this, but it takes me less time, so I just did it for you. Okay. But you're gonna go home and make one of these, right? I then what I do, one. well, you're <laughs> gonna get one, right? And then you just pin it in place. There you go. And this one, you're not doing it. Here, pin it down here though. Down at the bottom. Yep, and this one, you're not worrying about it shifting like I told you earlier with the pinning it the opposite way. I just do it straight like this. Okay, here's where it gets scary complicated, right? Then you take, I'm joking by the way. Okay. You take the handles and you stick them right here underneath this. So you just slide it underneath and you're thinking, that doesn't make any sense, Heather, but it's going to make sense someday. Now, this is where you're gonna feel where the other handles are because you want those to be even. So like one's here. And then the other one's right here. And then you're gonna take it over the machine. And I just sew across there? Sew across there. And I would start beside a handle. And I'll show you why. And you can actually take this out if, if that's easier for you. It's up to okay. you. Yeah. So start right there. You're gonna sew really close to the seam. Yep. So it's gonna be the quarter inch, but it's gonna be on the opposite side, right? Mm -hmm. And you're on zigzag, so you wanna switch it back to straight edge. And I would wait to the last minute to take the handle pin out, just because it'll shift. There you go, now you're in it so you can take it out. stop there and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just take the handle and you're gonna fold it over and you're gonna keep driving now when you do this I'll show you so drive over the handle yep it's gonna be hard it doesn't want to stop and then twist it and go up and then just make an X oh, okay so you're gonna go diagonally to the other corner. Go slow because remember we're going through a lot and we don't wanna break a, fit, a needle. Stop and then twist it. And we're gonna make it go this way now. See, we're gonna go straight so that it makes an X, you know? Oh, okay. It's just like an X, but it's also like an hourglass. And then twist, oops. 
then you have it locked in. Okay, now pull the needle out and we're gonna chop it. And the close up, I don't know if you can see that. You made an X right there, and you would just make an hourglass X. That saves on thread because you don't want to spend all day doing that. And we're just gonna, once you've done all four, you just flip it inside out, and you'd have it done. I'm gonna just, do you mind if I just yeah. finish it real quick? <laughs> like. And there you have it. That was easy. And then you have a canvas bag that nobody else has. You have a unique one. This isn't one of those ones that you see at the store that everybody owns. You have a very unique bag that can be laundered just like your clothes and it's gonna give you many years of service. And you can say, I did it on my So Sensible show. And you can trim these later. <laughs> so here you go. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> so be sure to check in with us again for our other So Sensible shows. Every time any a guest comes on, they get to keep whatever we make. So if there's something that you'd like to see, you're welcome to come on the show and you can make something too and also get to keep the thing that we make. So I'd love to see you again. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.